Dear sons and daughters of planet Earth, I am Sananda. It is with great gratitude that I once again come to you to bring a little hope, a little light, to the minds of the inhabitants of this planet. The history of this planet is very old, many have passed through here. I couldn't say that every race in the universe has set foot here, but I can say that almost all of them have. Many came with the intention of getting to know this beautiful planet that was created, many came to collect flowers and fruits to try to produce on their own planets. The diversity on this planet is immense and I can say that there is no such diverse planet in the universe. You call perfection paradise. So, I could say that Father or Mother God created a paradise on this planet. He created all kinds of flowers, fruits, grasses, minerals, crystals, every possible combination between them exists on this planet, exactly for a great project, a project that could test, a new form of life, a new way of being and thinking. Divine laws exist throughout the universe and through unconditional love and balance, the universe remains expanding, precisely because of these laws, so that chaos is not created, but rather, harmony. Father or Mother God did not stop his creations. In your mind, it is complex to understand this, how far does the creation of God the Father or Mother go? How many universes are there in the universe that you know? I would say that it is actually complex for you to understand. Because you were used to everything having form and appearance, but everything that Father or Mother God created is not based on form and aspect, everything is energy and each energy created is maintained, exactly by these divine laws, so that harmony and expansion happen. Some did not accept the divine laws, if they saw fit to contest them and break the harmony of the universe, bringing imbalance and pain. Why did Father or Mother God allow this? Because there is nothing to be proven. Father or Mother God does not need to prove what is best every moment. So those who rebel and challenge their laws are not prevented from doing so, precisely because of the immense love that God the father or mother has. It's like a father who lets his son fall a few times, so that he learns to walk, only then will he learn to be careful and not fall again. So this process of rebellion was not prevented by father or mother God and also spread throughout the universe and these souls are so permeated with lovelessness that they do not care about what happens to other beings. In an attempt to prove that their way of thinking is better, more correct, and in this way they bring, pleasure, wealth, sovereignty, power, and many allow themselves to be seduced. In this way, this beautiful planet, which was the true paradise, was the scene of a great test. To what extent would such a wonderful, paradisiacal place be able to keep its members connected to the divine laws, no matter what happens. And for this project to happen, free will was created, that is, souls could decide what to do, even if it was against divine laws. There would only always be a return, because nothing that is done against the divine laws remains without a return. So, many of you may ask yourselves, so how do these? which were contrary to the divine laws, continue to expand in the universe. And I answer them, and who said they keep expanding? As the universe expands within the divine laws, more and more souls realize the great deception that has been made and take new directions. And with that, they lose their followers. And this is happening throughout the universe. I can say that one day, the entire universe will be pure balance, there will no longer be this type of action. So you have gained free will, the inhabitants of this planet. And they lived very well for a long time. But precisely the divergence of opinions, power, even without that evil power that would one day exist, caused the fall of consciousness on this planet. And those who were always against it arrived here, and they saw that stage as the ideal place to implement their ideas, and they did so dominated this planet. They dominated, because the human consciousness existing here had already fallen into consciousness, they were no longer linked to the Source, to God the Father or Mother. And so your journey began. A trajectory of oblivion with each incarnation, 
so that you would remain on a line of evolution, but only learning new experiences each time you were here in a physical body. If you remembered, it wouldn't be funny, you could either correct yourself or make things worse. So, the idea was to create the wheel of samsara, so that you would not remember what you were in past incarnations, and could each time choose new paths and in this way evolve your souls. This process is long, but every project, and you know this, has a deadline, and this project is coming to an end. There will no longer be free will on this planet, you will be guided by divine laws. But for this to happen, you need to elevate yourself, you need to be in the fifth dimension. Those who arrived here and created this entire monitoring and manipulation program are no longer on your planet, they are already reaping the results of what they did. Some there at first escaped, but since Ashta Sharon's fleet arrived here, no being has escaped, many still arrived and never left. They were all taken, so that you understand, to the divine courts. Ah, but is there a trial? Where there is law, there is judgment. But it's not the judgment you make on the planet, you judge without knowing the other's side and that's not what we do, because we know exactly what the other is doing. So this process is coming to an end, the big question right now is, who is ready to ascend? Who is actually giving up all these great pillars that they presented? Who is rebelling against them? Who is completely focused on the divine laws? So this is the big question right now. And I would say, that is the question that each of you needs to ask, what am I following right now? The divine laws, where I must not judge, I must not criticize, I must not hurt, I must not inferiorize, I must not discriminate, I must not do anything that makes a brother smaller or in pain, at any time. I need to think about equality, I need to think about unconditional love and I need to think about the planet so this is the big question. Are you following this path or at least trying to follow this path? We are aware that change is not easy for you, some are extremely difficult, but they are all choices. If you open your hearts and desire, and want to live within the divine laws, the universe itself conspires for this. The universe itself guides you to the right path, helps you get rid of addictions, those superfluous and ephemeral things that you like so much. You just need to make a choice. And with each step you manage to overcome, you empower yourself to be on the road to ascension and walk on it, and in the future, when that limit, when the end date of that project arrives, you may be ready to take your soul baggage and go to the fifth dimension. So it is a choice that all humanity will have to make. There is no point in wanting to follow a caravan, there is no point in wanting to follow in groups, in families, each soul is different and each one can even live together, have sentimental affinities and have totally different thoughts. Then it will be the choice of each soul. Don't try to follow in a group, don't try to follow with anyone, except those who depend on your decisions. So realize that in addition to having your own decision, you also have the responsibility for the other soul you care for. But rest assured that no soul will be harmed because of another. If it is at the moment for that little soul, small in body, to ascend, it will ascend. Family ties will not prevent it from going forward. Be sure of this. Because each soul is a soul, it is not tied to any other. No one is tied to anyone, it doesn't matter the degree of kinship. Each soul exists by itself, it does not exist in function of another. So the time has come for a great choice but for a sincere choice, for that choice where there will be no hesitation, there will be no doubts, wanting to ascend or not. So at this moment, the limit for this choice has come. Whoever chooses to walk towards ascension, we can say that all of us, the beings of light, the ascended beings, solar beings, angels, archangels, no matter who we are, we will all be committed to helping each of you on this journey including helping to overcome obstacles. We can say here and now that time is running out, and that this decision needs to be made, that the further ahead it is taken, the greater the risk of you not being able to make it. 
Those souls that need to wake up, will wake up, because they need to take their path. The moment of definition has arrived. The time has come for the effective separation of the wheat from the chaff, and rest assured that this separation will be done. When we say that the world will fall out there and you will land on your feet, we are telling you we are with you in any situation, no matter what happens next to you. For this we need you to just trust us, that you believe that we are there around you, like a great shield, a great fortress. So, I close this message by saying to everyone who is listening to me, make your choice. Do it from the heart, and when you do it, you will certainly gain a legion of beings of light around you, helping you on this journey. You just need to believe.